Dexter rides again. The restoration of the primary school at Harwick had finally been completed. The children were happy to return to the newly refurbished building. For the past few months, while the restoration was being done, some of the older children attended to other schools, such as the ones at Brenham and at Bluffs Cove. The Year 1 students, however, were taught their lessons inside an old coach named Dexter, who Doug had rescued from the old and abandoned shunting yard. Now that all the students were back at the new school, the fat controller decided that Dexter would also be restored once again to work on the railway. At the steamworks, work on Dexter was almost complete. You're nearly finished, my friend, Puff Victor. Just a few more little tweaks and we'll have you carrying passengers in no time. Dexter smiled. It's lovely to be back on the rails again, he said. I can't wait to fly down on the line just like the old days. Soon, the work was done. Dexter had passed all the tests to make sure everything was in working order, and he grew more and more excited. Just then, the fat controller pulled up. Ah, Jexja, he said. Ah, some news for you. Oh, what is it, sir? asked Dexter. We'll be giving you a trial on Thomas's branch line tomorrow. Dexter grinned. He couldn't wait to be used as a passenger coach again. The next morning, Thomas woke up bright and early and went to fetch his coaches Annie and Clarabelle from the carriage shed. He whistled happily. Good morning, Annie. Good morning, Clarabelle, he peeped. Oh, good morning, Thomas, the coaches replied in unison. Thomas cobbled up to his coaches, and he was just about to leave the junction when Percy steamed in pulling a red coach. Wait, Thomas, he cried. Percy, what are you playing at? Thomas said impatiently. I can't be late. The fat controller wants you to take another coach with you, said Percy. Thomas felt uneasy. Another coach? Yes, replied Percy. He's just been restored and is going to work with us for a while. His name is Dexter. But we already have enough coaches, insisted Thomas. I don't make the rules, Thomas, said Percy. Just take him along. He's really friendly. Fine. Puffed Thomas reluctantly. Dexter was coupled up behind Clarabelle, and Thomas set off for Ellsbridge, feeling very unhappy. He, Annie, and Clarabelle had worked together for many years, and the only thing he liked less than another engine taking his coaches was having to let others tag along with them. Thomas soon arrived at the junction, where he had to wait for Henry to arrive with his passengers. Lovely day, isn't it, Thomas? asked Dexter. Thomas said nothing. Dexter was puzzled. What's with him? He wondered. Oh, don't worry about him, Clarabelle replied. He's just a little stubborn sometimes, and he's not really used to the change in routine. I'm not stubborn, puffed Thomas indignantly. I just don't see why I need an extra coach, that's all. Well, the very least you can do is just to be nice, said Annie. Thomas was still cross at the prospect of having to give a new coach a chance. Henry was running late, and Thomas was beginning to feel impatient. Thomas was a guaranteed connection, so he couldn't leave until Henry's passengers were on board his coaches. You know, said Dexter, I'm glad to be back on rails again. When they used me as a school, some of the kids stuck their gum on my seats. An incredibly long and awkward silence fell. Finally, after what seemed like hours, Henry pulled into the platform. Sorry I'm late, he whistled. I heard of cows straight on the line. Oh, that old excuse, sneered Thomas. It's true, fumed Henry. It's the blasted farmer. He refused to fix his fence properly. Time's time, said Thomas. The fat controller relies on me to keep it. Before Henry could reply, the guard's whistle blew, and Thomas puffed away, leaving Henry very cross. Thomas's mood didn't improve throughout the day, and it seemed as though Thomas wanted to stay sour. Meanwhile, Dexter tried to make a conversation with Thomas, but to no avail. By the end of the day, Dexter felt very sad. Thomas shunted the coaches back into the carriage shed before heading off to his own shed. You look like you're in a good mood. Toby chuckled. Shut up, said Thomas. I had a rough day, all right? So you were told to take an extra coach with you, said Percy. What's so wrong with that? My runs with Annie and Clarabelle are special to me, 
Puff Thomas. It's like with Toby and Henrietta. Not really, replied Toby. I mean, sure, Henrietta and I are inseparable, but I love having Victoria tag along with us whenever she can. Well, that's you, said Thomas. I'm not like you. Very few are, Toby replied. Steamed trams like myself are a special lot. I don't mean in terms of looks, said Thomas. I mean, if you're fine with having to carry extra weight with you, then good on you. But that's not how I operate. Well, it's gonna have to be the way you operate, peeped Percy. The fat controller says you must take Dexter along with you tomorrow. Again? But why? Beats me, said Percy. But at least make an effort to be nice next time. Dexter's very friendly, and you should be too. Thomas was too upset to say anything, so he went straight to sleep. Dexter, meanwhile, was talking to Victoria, who happened to be next to him in the carriage shed. I just don't understand, said Dexter sadly. I've been nothing but nice to Thomas, and he treats me like I don't even exist. Oh, don't take it too personally, sued Victoria. He's cross now, but just give him time. I'm sure he'll warm up to you. Dexter wasn't convinced. The next morning, Thomas coupled up to the three coaches and prepared to leave for the junction once again. Little did he know that Dexter was planning to get even. Thomas waited at the platform for Henry to arrive, and soon he did. Then there was trouble. When Thomas tried to puff away, he found that he couldn't. His wheels spun around and around. What's happening? He cried. Everyone came to see Thomas struggling to move. They dropped more sand on the rails, but nothing worked. Eventually, out of breath, Thomas stopped moving. Dexter smirked. He had left his brakes on deliberately as retaliation for Thomas's rude behavior. Oh, dearly me, Thomas, said Dexter. What could possibly be wrong? I can't move said Thomas completely exhausted maybe someone oh I don't know left their brakes on Dexter replied no that's ridiculous who would do such a thing Thomas suddenly realized did did you yes Thomas I did said Dexter proudly Thomas felt so humiliated he nearly began to cry Dexter released his brakes and Thomas puffed quickly away, trying to hold his tears. When Thomas reached Farquhar, he saw the fat controller waiting angrily on the platform. I've heard that you've been very rude to Dexter, he said. I know you're not used to him being here, but I expect that my engine treats others with respect. Y yes sir, uh, uh, sorry sir, said Thomas. The fat controller turned to Dexter. Ash for you, Dexter, he went on. I expect this sort of behavior from the trucks, but not from coaches. You have caused confusion and delay with your ridiculous pranks. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sir, said Dexter. It won't happen again. Thomas shunted the coaches back into the carriage shed. But before he went to his own shed, Dexter spoke up. I'm sorry I tricked you, said the coach. And I'm sorry too, puffed Thomas. I should have been so rude to you. I understand change is difficult, said Dexter. Believe me, after being a school for a few months, it felt weird going back to being a coach again. You know, I'm glad we're able to patch things up, puffed Thomas. Truce? Truce, replied Dexter. The next day, Thomas took Dexter along with Annie and Clarabelle. But this time, things were a little different. He didn't complain once, and he soon found himself chatting with Dexter non-stop. The two are now great friends, and Dexter has decided to stay on the Farquhar branch. Thomas and Toby take turns pulling Dexter along with their own coaches, and the coach is very happy at his new home. Thomas is accepting of this change. However, nothing can prepare him for an even bigger change that happened the very next week. But I mustn't say any more, or I shall spoil the next story. <laughs>